Hello everyone and welcome to Jeff G tonight. Well, three minutes ago, I just spoke with Nick Fuentes. <laughs> We had not spoken since the Brother Wars of 2000, whatever, was it 2019? Uh, and he showed up on a, on a space. I mean, at first I, I was on Twitter. I was planning to chill. I was, uh, you know, done preparing the show. And sometimes I go upstairs and I just want to scroll my Twitter. And then I see a Twitter space that's named <laughs> Milo tried to sleep with me. And I'm like, well, okay, th that must be related to Nick, to his claim that there are some some people who are ready to speak against Milo because Milo has some people who are willing to speak against uh, Ali Alexander, and uh, we forgave each other. That was a beautiful moment. That was so. Uh, John Drake says, "What? I thought he was unforgivable. Unforgivable. Well, you know, when you attack me, I strike back. I hurt you." But then, you know, after years of waiting, <coughs> um, I didn't feel anything about him anymore. I, I, I didn't feel like I, I had a depth of hitting him back. I felt that I had hit him back enough. And so I, I was totally neutral. I've been saying as such uh, for months on Twitter, people were asking me, Jeff, are you still pissed against Nick? No. And I was never really emotionally pissed. Uh, against Nick. Uh, it's, it's just that if you insult my family on the, in the public space, I have to strike back. I have to punish you in some way. So that, that is just it. It's a matter of honor and it's a matter of, uh, you know, displaying to the next generation. There, there will be cost if you mess up your, your social relationships for no reason at all. That is, that is all I, I basically was pissed against him by obligation. Anyways, so I see this, uh, this Twitter space, Milo tried to sleep with me. And I'm like, oh, what is this? Some, some rando guy got raped by Milo somewhere. I want to hear about this. And I click the space and holy shit, it's Nick Fuentes speaking. And so, and he was accumulating more and more viewers, 2,400 viewers at this point. So I was like, oh, okay, is that a recording of Nick? But no, eventually I understand that this is Nick speaking live, but that since he is banned from Twitter, he has to create new accounts every time and his accounts last only 24 hours. And, uh, you know, so, so there he was making a space going after Milo because Milo is launching a, a kind of operation, uh, an entire operation formed by gay people. It, it's amazing. And it's, a, it's not a conspiracy theory. It's just the entire gay right wing, which... I didn't know you could be gay and right-wing. It's always been an issue to me, this conception that even Milo was a right-winger. Uh, but anyway, so th there's, the, there's a bunch of gay people funded by gay funders doing gay stuff in gay hotels, and these gay people are all trying to dump onto Nick and Ali Alexander, and Ali, Ali Alexander himself is gay. And holy shit, yesterday I had commented on all this and I had said, uh, oh yeah, I, re I realized that my, my usual camera settings have been undermined because I, I restarted my computer. Yesterday my comment on all this was, this doesn't seem serious at all. It seems like bickering, bickering between, between people who shouldn't even be uh, considered social conservatives of any kind. It's like, okay, I get it. You, you have your little butt uh, hobbies and you think that hey since you're being so useless to the continuation of the species why would you not use your last time on earth your the rest of your life to generate ideological structure that will structure civilization for a better world for men and women who do continue the species and it's like even that even by that argument it's at some point, you have to preach by example, and a gay person just cannot preach by example in terms of family life. Because if you've pursued so much your instinct and desires, uh, no matter whether you were born with, let, let's say you were born with, <clears throat> with this attraction for other men, still you have pursued this attraction more than the idea of continuing your reproduction. 
And so you failed at the test of modernity. The test of modernity was, can you say no to whatever it is that you feel inside and that you think you are or that people have convinced you you were? And can you dedicate your life to reproduction? A gay person, by definition, has failed that test. So anyways, I, I listened to uh, Nick. And uh, for an hour, he laid out, uh, to, to give a summary, uh, Milo set up a... Milo set up an occasion during the year, year 24 stuff where they would end up in a hotel and they would end up in the same room and there would end up to be a single bed in the room. <laughs> uh, that, is, uh, that is what's happened. And, and Nick uh, saw the whole thing, saw the room and said, look, Milo, I can't do this. That is how he tried to sleep with Nick. So it's not like the dick was aligned with his anus and we were at like a millimeter close, but it was like uh, we were one meter away from, uh, uh, from Nick Fuentes becoming a gay car boy for, for the local church uh, of Milo. Uh, I, I think it's reasonable. I think, uh, you know, uh, people were saying, JF, they're, he's bullshitting you. So some people in, in previ previously, uh, before the show began, were telling me, Jeff, I don't believe this bullshit. Um, I believe Nick. <laughs> because the setup of the hotel room, uh, I've been doing it again and again. Not for young boys, uh, but for women. I mean, it's a setup. It's uh, like, and honestly, like, women actually don't see it coming. <laughs> it's like women are like, oh, yeah, let's travel and learn stuff. Oh yeah, well, we have to take a hotel room, right? Oh yeah, well, it has to be a single room because we won't pay for two separate rooms, right? Oh yeah, and we, we did bring... <laughs> the, it, it's, it's almost like every time it works, I was like... And, and, and the woman would react by saying, like, I didn't expect that we would have sex. And so I, I know that this is a thing. It's a thing to set up a single room uh, in a hotel and arrange the occasion so that it happens. And so I have to extend the empathy toward the gay side there and say that the same thing must happen to gay people, that there must be the same tricks being pulled on the gay side. Uh, so, so people are asking, how did the communication initiate? I, I will tell the whole story, but... Basically, I did apply to be a speaker in the Twitter space. And so he saw mine. Uh, it, it was funny. It was a funny moment. I'll get to it. So those are the claims of Milo, uh, of Nick against Milo, basically, because Milo is, on a, is trying to drag uh, dirt on Ali Alexander being gay and trying to drag Nick at the same time. And even yesterday, before speaking to Nick, I was like, he, he has nothing against Nick. He has the conception that Nick acted irresponsibly by letting such a gay guy hang around his own crowd. And Nick, as uh, you have to give it to Nick there, his point is, Milo, based on the evidence that you're giving me about Ali Alexander, you realize that I would have to ban you from my circles before I ban him. Because Milo is an enthusiast gay man. Milo tried to sleep with young people, including Nick himself. Milo has advocated for pedophilia being, oh yeah, you know, the children kind of want it. I wanted it when I was 14. And so you, you have a, a much greater case that Milo is a danger to be around, and he's a danger to be around. And, and by the standard that he's asking Nick to disavow Ali Alexander, Milo should be disavowed 10x. Uh, I think that's a totally reasonable position. Uh, I don't, and on top of it, you're being asked basically to <clears throat> trust a bunch of smearings and reputational stuff without necessarily the evidence being dropped on the public space. Because here, Milo is claiming that he has three on video recording of people claiming that Ali Alexander has kind of raped them or uh, has flirted with them. But we don't have the video, so you have to believe Milo's words. So we're still in the smearing domain. So I fully uh, agree with Nick there. 
So there, there I was listening to his stuff, and then he makes another case that the whole Jaden McNeil being uh, pissed at Nick Fuentes, the whole Jaden McNeil stuff stems from a gay funder, apparently. Because apparently, uh, <coughs> Jaden McNeil made the error on one of his, uh, on one of his uh, shows to show a tab to show a tab that was exposing the fact that he's funded by a man named Ultra 668. Ultra 668 has a long history on the internet and has used several different aliases, Ultra 668, Southside Cards, and Dengar. Unfortunately for him, however, he was stupid enough to post much of his filth under his real first and last name. <coughs> And he apparently is sending thousands of dollars to Jaden McNeil to keep propping up this whole campaign against Nick Fuentes. Very interesting. It's so much trouble. It's like so much human stuff. I would, I would wash this away. But then Laura Loomer applies to be a speaker and Nick Fuentes invites her. So by the way, I'm now at one degree of separation from Laura Loomer. Just saying. We could do Gamergate 3, me, Laura Loomer, Trump. I'm one degree of separation from Laura Loomer. I spoke on a Twitter space like 10 minutes after she was on. <clears throat> I think that it, it would be easy with this kind of social contacts to uh, start Gamergate 3. Uh, I'm on the ground floor sends 50 bucks. Thank you so much for supporting the show. By the way, if you'd like to support the show, use the dollar button under the Odyssey chat. Odyssey super chats are my favorite way to receive support for the show. Alternatively, feel free to use Entropy. The link to Entropy is in the description below. If you'd like to send Odyssey super chats, make sure you add a payment method before sending the super chats. I'm on the ground floor has sent 50 bucks. He says, it made me so happy when Nick asked you to talk. We need to bring it back like the good old days. Absolutely. And so for, for a long time, I thought that he would not bring me on because here's how it happened. So Laura Loomer then comes onto the Twitter space and she starts uh, revealing, she starts revealing that Marjorie Taylor Greene has been uh, to a certain extent involved in the Ye24 stuff, but then backed out when the InfoWars appearance happened. Uh, so Marjorie Taylor Greene apparently has a was hiring Milo, was hiring Milo for months, paying many many thousands of dollars, like thirty thousand dollar a month, Milo to be her campaign or whatever, some sort of manager of the office. Uh, and Milo therefore was in the, in in recent history, Milo was working under Marjorie Taylor Greene. Uh, doing all this, all this organizational stuff, and then insisting to Nick that he should be organizer on the America First stuff, and Milo would have used his position as organizer of all of this, and Marjorie Taylor Greene uh, going to the America First conference. Milo would have used his position to leak and uh, communicate to the press the list of speakers which uh, eventually put America First in trouble because some of their star speaker shied away after this, uh, this, this pre-publication because they got contacted by Fox News and they got told uh, if you go there, you're never going to be on Fox News anymore. So, <clears throat> so it seems that uh, Milo is bringing trouble everything he touches, everywhere he goes. That's what I retain. And it also seems that Mar Marjorie Taylor Greene has been attempting to dip her toes into this kind of America first trend and try to get something from Milo, <coughs> but eventually uh, shied away, backed away, and chose otherwise and chose to disavow. Uh, that was revealed by Laura Loomer. And uh, there, there's a guy named Isa something. And he was working under Marjorie Taylor Greene. And amazingly, she reveals that this Isa guy uh, would have bought the domain name for Ye 
So ye 24 because it's a short domain name, they are already bought generally and you have to pay a lot of money. Milo Yiannopoulos would have been so much in debt and so much in having no money at all. He couldn't afford the $10,000 to buy the domain name ye 24 And Isa, working under Mar Marjorie Taylor Greene, would have found a way to redirect money. Was it his personal money? Was it money that he was reimbursing to himself? There, there, there's some sort of a claim by Laura Loomer and Nick that perhaps this is some kind of uh, SEC, uh, electoral commission violation, but they were basically buying the domain name for Kanye uh, because Milo Yiannopoulos was working under them and had worked under them and was able to convince them that we have to have this domain for Ye. It's uh, very interesting what's been revealed. So that was uh, this part of the discussion. And so I clicked on request to be a speaker. And uh, and it took, uh, took uh, like 10, 12, 15 minutes maybe. And then Nick was at the end of his uh, Twitter space and he was like, all right, who wants to speak? I don't see much people. Ah, there's not much people requesting the speaker place. <laughs> and then he started saying, all right, send me DMs. Send me DMs about stuff you'd like me to talk about. And then he was like, oh, I, I don't get much DM. Well, it looks like it's going to be the end of the show soon. Maybe there's some people who want to speak. And I knew that in his interface, I would appear at the top, JF. <laughs> JF has requested to speak for 30 minutes. And I was like, oh, is he, is he trying to get away and not talk to me? I, I thought that that was what he was going to do. Uh, but eventually at the last minute after being like, after having dead hair and, uh, okay, let's talk to JF. <laughs> so I see that I'm uh, mic'd on on my phone. And there, there, there it was. It, it lasted like a minute, our discussion. But I started saying, well, that's a lot of gay people. That is a lot of gay people. And I, I said I was happy to speak with him again. And he broke the high. So I really respect this, which, which, what he has done, uh, because this is very rare that in a case of ego, uh, ego clash, uh, so, you know, someone has the, the force to, to make the first step. And he, he broke the ice first and said, look, uh, we've been in a beef and uh, I forgive you for, for banning me, for, for, from getting me banned from YouTube. And then he said, well, getting me banned, I don't know if you got me banned, but for reporting me to YouTube. And so that was really nice. And then I said, all right, I forgive you uh, for insulting me and my family. <laughs> and that was it. Then I complimented him on his uh, recent interview with the woman. And uh, that was it. So that, that is the, the closing of a loop and hopefully the opening of, a, of an interesting loop going forward. Uh, Nick Frontes, no more in a beef, uh, no more beef between him and me. Uh, Nicolas Petris says, heartwarming, he's crying. Well, 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 that's too much emotions, too much emotion. Thank you for watching this clip. This is the CACA Lofe. Remember to like and subscribe.